on behavior change we have a session called changing travel behaviors by overcoming the barriers to change and i'd like to introduce sustainability and behavior change consultant livy drake hi livy hello 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 welcome pleasure to have you with us so livy has over a decade of experience working in sustainability and behavior change uh, big emphasis on the behavior change part right livy yes exactly exactly Absolutely. Um, and Livy's been running her own consultancy called Sustainability Sidekicks. I've been to a couple of your webinars myself. Um, fantastic stuff. So I definitely recommend those. And that's been going almost 10 years, I think, which, and you support uh, sustainability leads to engage stakeholders in pro-environmental behavior change. Exactly. Um, exactly. Exactly. And there's a recent example from a carpooling trial, recent carpooling uh, trial. And so Livy's going to be sharing some insights on core principles of behavior change and how they apply to low carbon choices. It's going to explain the core principles of behavior change and help uh, you and us to identify the main barriers before showcasing how you can adopt mechanisms to encourage sustainable commuting choices in your organization. So Livy, that's enough from me. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. So I'm going to try doing a hand movement for, uh, for the slide changes because um, I prefer that than saying next slide, please. So hopefully, uh, Jackson, you're watching my hand going up. Thank you. So the approach to addressing behavior change isn't, and I'm going to say this after we've just had a whole thing about incentives, isn't that we just jump to how can we incentivize people to do something? First of all, to really um, approach behavior change, we need to understand who's our target audience, what's going on for them. We need to get specific about the behavior we're asking them to do. We need to understand the barriers and motivators. And then we start to devise an initiative. Then we try it to see whether it works. And then we learn and we iterate. So let's talk about segmenting audiences. So this could be that you segment your audience in your workplace by the different um, demographics. So you could have mums, you know, and uh, there was an earlier example of why mums might not have be able to uh, cycle to work because they've got other things to do. And this is an example here um, from the Department for Transport where they've segmented audiences through different persona types. And this is um, why people were and weren't using a car. So you've got people who are maybe reliant on a car because they're, they're disabled or they're more elderly. Then you've got families which um, they need a car because they've got to pick up their children all the time. Then you've got people who don't have a car because they can't afford it, but they would like to own one. So there's lots of different ways that we can segment our audience to then understand what's going on for those different people. So once we've segmented our audience, we want to think about the behavior. And when we talk about low carbon tra transport, we could be talking about getting a bus, uh, getting on a bicycle, um, lift sharing. They are all different behaviors. And we can't say to people, oh, just do some low carbon transport. We need to get specific on that behavior so we can understand the barriers and the motivators. And even within cycling, it, you can, it can be a different behavior. So let's say cycling to work in a flat place like Norfolk versus cycling to work in a hilly place like Yorkshire or Bristol, they're different behaviors. Cycling to work um, in the morning to work and then taking your children out on a leisurely bike ride on a Sunday, completely different behaviors which have different barriers and motivators. So once we've understood that, we want to delve into what are those motivators and barriers. And what we're going to look at now is why people do car travel. So why do people carry on driving? So car travel motivators. So this example here is from a workshop that um, I run on behavior, um, on behaviors, on and travel behaviors. And with this, uh, we looked at what are the barriers or why do people carry on driving their car? So first of all, we looked at the cognitive shortcuts, which are the top row. And these are reasons that sustainability leads gave thinking about their, um, their employees. So cognitive shortcuts could be habits and routines. 
so people do what they've always done. Some people say that, you know, it's quite nice having some quiet time in the car. It's their moment of peace. So there's that emotive reason for doing it. When we talk about getting in a car, it's very convenient. And then we think about the social influences. So people, what other people do. So we're motivated by the people around us. And if we see all our neighbours uh, jumping in their cars, well, why would we wait for the bus in the rain? So there's all this social proof around what people do and don't do. And then we've got the infrastructure. So why is it easy to jump in a car? Well, m lots of people have on-street parking, so it's the default that they can step out of their house onto the, into their car. Some people get company cars, and maybe they get a company car park. And there can be even status around that. So, you know, are you going to give up the status that you've hard worked for um, to jump on a bike? So these are some of the motivators. So then we want to think about the barriers to change. So we want people to lift share, get on a bike, get in a car, not in a car, in a, so what is it? So the barriers to cycling. So this research shows that main people's barrier was weather. That then it was commitments before or after work, which was something that Nikki shared a moment ago. And then what about needing to carry materials for work? And then you've got car drivers' attitudes and beliefs. So the fear that people don't like cyclists. I'm not going to read them all out, but it gives you an idea that we need to understand what are these things are going on so we can overcome them or what are people's preconceptions so we can overcome them. And then we've got this social status around these different um, these different modes. So, you know, in London, it's perfectly normal for everybody to get on a bus. But certainly in rural places, you know, you probably won't see a CEO getting the bus home. They're more likely to be driving a car. And, you know, how many how many people like like this guy here are going to be jumping on a scooter? There's definitely an age and a social status thing about riding scooters. So we need to be aware of these things. And then we want to think about what other things might be a barrier. So again, in this workshop uh, with the sustainability leads, we looked at the barriers to lift sharing. So to give you an example of why people would be less likely to do it, we looked at the pain points. So there's the anxiety over people um, having to discuss money with people or fear of other people being late. There's the concern um, that people, you know, might have to suddenly rush home for their kids. So that's not going to work. Um, what about if they're waiting for someone and they don't turn up? Then we've got these kind of, um, again, the social influences and then the infrastructure. So again, we're thinking, at, are there systems set up? I mean, obviously, if you've got the lift sharing um, app, and the mobility ways um, options, then that can overcome it. But if those systems aren't in place, People might feel like it's a lot of effort to arrange with someone. Do they even know who lives nearby? So it's really important to understand these things before we come up with solutions. So now we're going to talk about the solutions. So what are the initiatives for behavior change? So what we want to think about is some of these things again. So what we want to think, OK, if people um, are in a habit and a routine, that's the reason what we need to change. We want to think about getting them to think about their travel behavior. And when people think things through, then they're more likely to um, stick to them. So we want to work with them to set some goals. We want to plan through their, behavior, their, their journey. And in numerous test uh, experiments where people have um, thought the how, how will we do it, when, and the where, they're more likely to stick to their low carbon travel habits, whatever they are. We can provide tools to make it easier for people to do that journey planning. And obviously, there's the Lift Share app. Um, and then we've got things like Go Jauntly, which helps you to find different walks, which are away from the uh, the kind of polluted air uh, roadways. We've got a bike app like Better by Bike, which again helps with cycle routes. So how can we make it easier for people to do the right, to do the desirable behavior? And giving something a trial. So if people think that their, their um, colleagues are going to be late or people think that actually, you know, it's too dangerous to ride a bike, get them to give it a go. 
because quite often when people give things a go, it's not always as they expect. So in an electric bike trial, people um, were more likely to carry on cycling and all their preconceptions about why cycling wasn't a good idea um, passed away because actually they realized it wasn't as bad as they thought. In a three week car free trial, when they first did this trial with possible, they found um, four out of the 10 people actually reduced their car ownership and three bought new bikes. And then in a trial of getting people to use um, train travel instead of planes, after they'd done it once, they were much more likely to consider the train instead of a plane. So this is something that we can, you know, just give it a go. And we want to try and change the infrastructure and the defaults that are around people. So if it's the infrastructure, you know, because actually it's really easy to drive a car to work, then can we change that by um, charging for car parking, removing the car parking? What about making the default um, an electric bike instead of a car? And in a, in a trial, well, not in a trial, an actual um, case in North Bristol, they uh, reduced the car parking for the NHS. and I think. Some people that were um, nearby and actually that was the real the main reason that people changed their travel habits was because it was harder for them to park their car and if you're looking at bikes you know how can you actually go beyond just a bike rack and include um well these things changing rooms lockers and things that makes it easy for people to bring their bike bring all the extra clobber that you have to bring along so thinking about how do we make it easy for people or harder to do the, site, the, um, the driving. And then how do we make things social? We are social creatures and we are wired to um, do things with other people. We also look up to people to see what is that desirable behavior. So if we want it to be clear that actually, you know, everyone within the organization is changing, we want to see the CEO lift sharing or the CEO getting on a bike. We also want to see people like us cycling. And I saw there was a question earlier about women, um, why women don't cycle. So often it's because they don't see themselves as cyclists. They also often have more fear. So that's where the, tr the trials come in. But we want people to see people like them cycling. So think about if, if there aren't any role models or the only role models are people in Lycra, you know, it might not be a motivator. So the things that I've shared are examples um, from uh, the workshops that I deliver around behavior change. And I've got a program that's coming up and starting in the 22nd of October. And there is an early bird discount, which ends at the beginning of this month. And I don't know how we're doing on time. I think we're running a bit behind. Um, I have got a case study which I can um, share, which is more around, um, it was more around people with um, children who were lift sharing and it's how we encourage people to lift share 